Are you dealing with low back pain? Maybe a disc bulge at L4, L5, L5, S1? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you five exercises that you can do in the comfort of your own home to get rid of some of that pain, to get you moving again, get you back to living your life. And stick around to the very end. I got another bonus exercise that you can do that can start helping with that pain if it's going down the legs. Hi, my name is Dr. Frank Altenrath, and I'm a corrective care chiropractor in Creskill, New Jersey at Valley Optimal Spine. And what this channel is about is giving you tips and strategies on dealing with neck and low back pain, pain down the arms, pain down the legs, so that you can live your life to the fullest and get back to doing what you love to do. So with these exercises, we do not want to start these during your acute phase of your condition, which is the first couple of days after you have the injury. Uh, so usually the acute phase will last 48 hours, up to two weeks, it could even be four to six weeks, where you can start to move around again with less pain. We don't wanna do these during the really acute phase where you're in a lot of pain and any type of movement is gonna aggravate your symptoms, causing more pain down the legs. We don't wanna start these exercises at that point. Wait a little bit. That's why, like I always say, uh, before you start any exercise program, consult with your healthcare professional who knows your condition to make sure that these exercises are right for you. So the first, first exercise that we're gonna do is a pelvic tilt. Now this is designed to bring motion into your lower lumbar spine, right down in here, to get some fluid and nutrients back into the disc, some blood flow to the disc, so that we can really begin the healing process. So I'm using a model of the spine here to show you what we're gonna to attempt to do. Sitting in the chair neutral, you're going to rock your pelvis forward and then backwards. So sitting, we're gonna go forward, causing more of a bend in the back, more of a curve, and then we're gonna tuck our tailbone and bring it backwards, okay? So we're gonna do sets of those, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So, taking a living room chair or any kind of chair you have at home, sit in the chair, give a little space between the back of the chair and your back, and we're gonna sit in a nice neutral position. We're gonna try to tighten up the core, tighten up your abdominals a little bit to give some support, and we're going to start by rocking your pelvis forward, creating more of a low back curve. Hold that for three to five seconds. Then you're going to tuck your tailbone and bring your spine backwards, rounding your back. Hold that for three to five seconds. Then we're gonna go forward again. Again, trying to keep the core a little tight. Arch your back, hold it for three to five seconds. And then posterior, uh, tilt your, your pelvis, which is causing more of a flattening of the back. So forward, backward, forward, and backward. And if any range of motion is too, too far and you start feeling pain, take it back a little bit where there is no pain. And do three to four sets of these. Now these exercises can also be done laying on the floor. So get comfortable on the floor, bend your knees to about 90 degrees like this, contract your uh, core, make it a little bit tight for stability, and then tuck your tailbone underneath, flattening your back rounding your back, I should say, and then anterior pelvic tilt, causing more of a curve in your low back. Then go backwards, flattening your back, hold for three to five seconds, and then go forward. Same thing, holding for three to five seconds. Back, forward, back, forward. And they're gonna do about three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. And if there's any pain, cut back on your range of motion, go a little bit less forward or back, whichever position causes the pain. We wanna avoid pain in these exercises. So these next exercises are going to be extension exercises. These are designed to, again, create mobility in the lower spine as well as potentially moving some of that disc material that's migrated mostly like likely backwards back to the middle of your of the disc area to relieve some of the pain if you do have it going down the legs 
So we're going to stand about two feet away from the wall with our feet. We're going to put our hands against the wall as a brace. And we're going to simply extend our belly button toward the wall, causing extension in our back. We'll hold that for a few seconds and we'll straighten up again. Again, putting our belly button toward the wall, extend your back backwards, hold a few seconds, straighten out again. Can go backwards, belly button towards the wall, and straighten up again. And again, if anything hurts, then don't go as far forward in extension. Go a little bit less with your range of motion until it doesn't hurt. And do again, do about 10 to 15 sets, repetitions I should say, and three sets of these. Now we can also do the extension exercises more in the McKenzie protocol method, where we're gonna lay on our stomach onto our elbows. I'm gonna to try to arch our back, keep our belly button to the mat or to the floor, and we're just gonna lay on our elbows and do that for about 30 seconds or more. You can do it up to a minute or two, and it should help to relieve some of the pain if you have a bulging disc going to the back. When that becomes tolerable, what we can do then is from our elbows, go to our hands and really arch that upper back. Feel that arch right at that low back L4, L5, L5, S1 level. So hold that arch for 30 seconds and you can come back down to the elbows and we can do that again. Hold that arch for 30 seconds and do that two or three uh, two or three sets of that. When that becomes easy, what we can then do is do the actual McKenzie protocol where we're going from our hands flat, then using our arms, pushing up our upper body, creating an arch, a fulcrum at our low back, which is designed to not only loosen the back, but also to push any disc material from the back back to the middle of the disc. We want to see pain if you have any going down the legs or in the butt we want to have it go back up the leg back to the middle of the back and that's called centralization that's the goal so if you're doing these exercises and the pain goes further down the leg we want to stop immediately as these would not be right for you so we want to see any pain if you have it going down or going back i should say to the middle of the back and we can do about 10 repetitions, holding each time two to three seconds. So do about three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions of these. So the next exercises are called cat camel or cat cow exercises, where we're gonna get on our hands and knees. We're gonna try to continually contract the abdominal, the core muscles, keep them tight. And then from a neutral position, we're going to go into a rounding of our back, tucking our tailbone behind us. And then we wanna go dipping our stomach and looking up and extending our thoracic spine. And then just repeat, tuck the tailbone, round the back, then extend the back, causing a curve in the low back, moving the pelvis anteriorly and tucking the tailbone. And as you can see, I don't have too much mobility in extension due to all my hockey injuries in my back over the years but try to keep mobile as much as possible. So this is the idea. Tuck your pelvis, extend it here, anterior tilt, posterior tilt, and then round the back. Do three sets, 15 repetitions. If there's any pain, go back on the range of motion until there's no pain. Exercise number four is called the bird dog. What we're gonna do is start with Again, hands and knees. Try to contract your core again, keep the abdominal muscles somewhat tight. And we'll start just by raising one arm, holding it for a few seconds, then raise the other arm. Holding it for a few seconds, bring it back down. And we'll do that 10 times each side to start. Holding the arm up, a few seconds, bring it back down. Holding the arm up, few seconds bring it back down then we could start with one leg at a time raise one leg up hold it a few seconds bring it back down and raise the other leg up 
Hold it for two to three seconds. Bring it back down. When that becomes easy and no pain, we want to then alternate opposite arm with opposite leg. So we want to do left arm, right leg, hold it for a few seconds, bring it back down. Then the other side, right arm, left leg, straight out. Try to keep your spine nice and neutral and straight. Bring it back down. All the while, you want to try to keep your abdominal muscles contracted for stability. And we'll do about 10 each side. The next exercise is called a dead bug exercise. So in this position, we lay on our back using a, a pillow or support for your head and neck if you need to. And we're going to start with our legs up in the air, 90 degree bend at the knees. I'm going to lower one leg down, hold it for about three to five seconds, bring it back, all the time contracting your core, keeping the muscles of the core engaged to support the spine. Then the other leg, hold it for three seconds, and then switch. And you'll feel the tension in your low back as you do this, but we want to keep it Nice and supported by contracting the abdominals. Keep the pelvis in a neutral position. We don't want to forward extend the pelvis or rock it backwards. We want to keep it nice and neutral. Okay, now when that becomes easy, we're going to make it a little bit more challenging now by doing the actual dead bug where we're going to put our legs up and our arms up. I'm going to do opposite leg with opposite arms. So the left leg comes down, the right arm goes back. Now the right leg goes down, the left arm goes back. We want to do 10 to 15 repetitions, three sets of these. Great for low back stability. help that disc heal. So now for your bonus exercises. These are de decompression exercises. These are for if you have pain that's currently going down one of your legs and we want to centralize that pain. So let's just say now we have pain down the left leg. So you're going to put the opposite side of your body to the pain side against the wall. So if it's left-sided leg pain, our right side of our body goes against the wall. If it's right-sided leg pain, the left side of our body goes against the wall. So in this case, my right side of the body is gonna lean against the wall about two feet away from the wall where my feet are gonna be. I'm gonna lean with my shoulder into the wall. The pain, let's say, is going down my left leg. I'll take my left hand and I'll push my hip into the wall for a few seconds, bring it back. Push it into the wall, bring it back. This is creating a wedge on the, on the vertebrae that's going to pinch this side closed, which would mean that the disc material that's jutting out on your left side, causing the left side leg pain, is going to be squeezed back to the middle of the disc off of the nerve that's causing pain down the leg. So we wanna hold it for a few seconds, bring it back. So we want to do about 15 repetitions and we can do three sets of these. Again, if any of these exercises cause the pain to go further down the leg, then stop immediately because these are not right in your case. So this would be for left-sided leg pain. If it's on the right side, we would just switch and put our right side of our body, our left side of our body against the wall and do the same thing. Another at-home decompression exercise you can do is by taking a broomstick and putting it on the ground, making sure that if you have a piece of rubber, you can put it on the bottom or make sure it doesn't slip out in front, uh, slip out away from you. But hold the broomstick, press down into the ground, put your hands as high up as you can, and just lean forward as you feel that low back stretch, as you decompress that spine. Use two hands and really feel that stretch as you push down, that push that broomstick down into the ground 
trying to stretch that, decompress that back. You would also do it with one arm, each side. Really feel that decompression of that spine as you push down into that broomstick. And you could do these for, you know, three to four sets, a few times. Well, do them throughout the day if you have to. Left side, same thing. Just do them throughout the day to decompress that spine. Another decompression exercise you can do at home with two chairs to decompress the L4, L5, L5S1 region of your spine is take two chairs, stand them with the back of the chairs facing you. Put them about shoulder width apart. And again, you have to be strong enough to be able to hold your body here, but let your body hang as you put your weight on top of the chair and let your body basically hang and feel that upper body start to get decompressed as your lower body dangles from the chair. Now you could, if you're strong enough, you can hang your entire body with your feet off the ground, or you can just keep your, your feet on the ground, maybe get on your toes, take some of the weight off your feet, and just let your body decompress. You'll feel this in the arms as well, of course, but you're gonna feel the low back really decompress as you do that. And again, do this exercise if you can throughout the day. If you have the pain going down the legs, or in the back, this is just to decompress the spine at L4, L5, L5S1 level. And the last decompression exercise, if you have access to any kind of bar in the house that you could hang from, maybe a chin up bar or something, you can just hang off the edge of the bar and just let your body, de let your spine decompress. Now you don't have to hang completely off the ground. You can put your feet on the ground, but just bend your knees a little bit to take some of the weight off of your upper body if you can't hold your whole body when you hang. And just hang for 15, 20, 30 seconds if you can, as long as your shoulders can handle it um, and your wrists can handle it, but just hang to decompress that lower back. It's a great decompression exercise you can do at home or if you're at the gym. And again, try to do this throughout the day. And it's a great way to relieve some of that pressure and pain coming from an L4, L5, or L5S1 disc bulge. If you got some benefit from this video, hit that like button, tap that notification bell, and consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, it's your life. Live it in health.